Hey folks, Dillo in Berlin here with a message for Amanda in Tennessee. I don't know where Sweet Leaf is right now, but tell me which love potion you ordered and I'll make sure a bottle of it gets sent to you. Just remember, I'm in no way responsible for Sweet Leaf's extracurricular business deals. The thing is, he says these products only work if you follow the directions precisely as they're written on the bottle, which apparently nobody does. So, did you order the super stiffy oil that has to be applied manually by a nude playmate of the month? Or the wing job in a bottle where you have to take a peacock feather and... Mr. Dello, hold on a minute. What is it, Ned? Slice is a family show. Oh, um... I think she has the idea. Yeah, I guess you're right. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com Hey, welcome everyone to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael R. Menengay. I'm the man your parents warned you about. I'm Brian Brown. I'm the one that's forced to sit next to him every week. I'm Sam <laughs> Roberts. I'm Ben Raginton, and I've got a bad feeling about this. No, <laughs> really? <laughs> this this is uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Keith Light. <laughs> And I'm Megan. Hey, Megan. What's up? What's up, Ebony? What's up? No, oh, no, no. Did no, we no. just like, go back to the 90s? Yes, we did. As yeah, matter of fact. that's it. Hey, this is the listener feedback show. This is the time when we talk about all the stuff that you sent in. And, of course, you can do that by calling the numbers 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735. Or you can email me at mike at sliceofsci-fi.com and send me something very interesting in MP3 format, please. Or photos. Or photos. Or videos. Video. We got lots of videos yes. this week. Woohoo! Actually. Oh, yeah. did we now? Yeah. Nice. Always got some video stuff. In fact, uh, we could probably start with that right huh? now. <laughs> hey, Slicers. Here's another con report. Yes, Knoxville's had two conventions in the past month, and it's been pretty fun. We just saw Dirk Benedict and Lockhart and Adrian Paul from the Highlander series. And my little buddy here, she had a great time. It was very fun. So, reporting from Fanboy Expo, it's me, Surreal, as usual. With the geekling. Very cool. good for him. <laughs> Awesomely cute kid, man. I know. Let me tell you. Oh, Aww. that's why kids are so cute because you don't eat them then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I got said, nothing. I um, said too much. Awkward Moving silence. On. No, it's Awkward absolutely silence. totally accurate. So good but, on you. All right. Awesome. Okay. Good day, all ye Mikey Slicers. Lawn Buddha checking in with a quick take. I wanted to send all my thoughts to those impacted by Hurricane oh, Sandy, yeah. both oh, yeah. in the U.S. and throughout the Caribbean. My lawn flooded, and I had to be moved to the porch, but <laughs> that's insignificant compared to so many others. Absolutely. So I, I hope everyone joins me in keeping you in our thoughts and prayers. And it's a good uh, segue in there. Uh, yeah, our thoughts are out with all those people that have family back there as well and the people that are suffering through it right now. Um, you may have seen some really weirdness with um, Slice of Sci-Fi over the last few days as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, some of that is definitely attributed to the hurricane. Uh, some of it's other things, um, server moves. Um, some upgrades bad, we did. Some uh, upgrades. Uh, when we thought, you know, that when, when the thought was that do the upgrades – you know, when the internets are in a, in a Twitter, you know, uh, up in arms because of the hurricane, mm -hmm. some things are working, some things weren't working, and we figured... We'll just do it all now. We'll just do it all do it now. now. Take Although care that, of it. that really only works if you then blame it all on the storm. And so there basically you, you just told them it's no. not totally the storm's fault. No, it was, so all, the storm. Totally, all, it was the all the storm. All the storm. It was all the storm. It was okay. all the storm. Yeah, okay. that, that's it. There you that's go. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. It's used hair from Orlando. Used Calling in with my reaction to Mockingbird Lane. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Rainbow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Could not have made a better choice than uh, Eddie Izzard. Very hard mm -hmm. to go wrong with him. Excellent job. Willie in Maryland, meh. Could have done better. Could have done worse. Eddie, just wrong. It's just, really? No. Why? Oh, mm -hmm. No, no. Why? And Herman, yeah. my goodness. You could not have picked a worse Herman monster. Really? I literally I think would rather have seen Don Knotts standing there going, wow. Oh, I mm -hmm. love Eddie so much. Oh, than to see a skinny, average height, good-looking Herman Munster in trendy oh, it clothes. Was a different thing. No, I really thought people Jerry are supposed was to tall. faint when they see He's him tall. from fright. That's no, 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 no. I don't think I'll be watching more of the show. 
Well, there, there, well, isn't, there, there isn't no more of the show. You, you're, it's just, you get your wish. You, it didn't get picked up, it. right? Yeah. And so they just aired the pilot as a Halloween special. Know, which just makes me super, super sad because I wanted know, to see more. Do we know anything about uh, what kind of numbers it did? Uh, uh, it did really oh, well, it, didn't it? It did okay. It didn't do great. Yeah. I thought it did really well. It did pretty good, yeah. but, but probably not, enough not great series. enough for them to change their minds. Okay. Well, because mm. it costs so much to make it, though, right? Yeah. And then you couldn't feasibly spend that much for every episode. I don't know. I don't think that's it. Yeah, you know it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was it was amazingly fun to watch, and I thought the cast uh, uh, Portia de Rossi uh, uh, is that her name? Portia de Rossi. Portia, Portia de Rossi. I it. love her. I, I don't think she was very good as as Lily. Really? Really? No. really? No. I thought she was good. I thought she was okay. She's but I, so but good on Better Off Ted and Arrested Development. Oh yeah, but mm-hmm. but but it's a very different, this different, is a different focus character. kind mm-hmm. of role, and this character's kind of different. Now the the woman they had played Marilyn was oh, awesome. Oh, she was great. She was really good, and she had that kind of weird. My family's freaky. And I'm almost like a serial killer freaky vibe yeah. to her, but she's normal. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's the nice. normal one. Yeah, but and, yeah, she's like if she were among any other normal people, she would be, be like, the weird one. Weird one, yeah, absolutely. Eddie Izzard killed it. I mean, mm-hmm. oh yeah, no offense. Well, to I thought Jerry O'Connor was was good actually. I thought his mm-hmm. role was good as as Herman. Yeah, I, he he pulled it off fairly well. You know, he's 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 basically a, a Frankenstein monster. He's got an amalgamation of parts. So he's got this big scar on his neck mm-hmm. and everything. He's got all these scars on his body. And everything, so he pulled it off fairly well. But he's he's still normal-ish looking. Yeah, you know that's mm-hmm. one of the things that they commented like, "Ooh, what happened there?" You know, what, I don't remember what Grandpa said. Oh, what did he say? Some sort of accident of some sort. I don't remember. It was oh, he, oh, it was actually I think it was just a throwaway line about yeah. how he loses his head if it weren't so. Yeah, on. that's exactly that's what, what it was. was. <laughs> it, it was some clever things, and of course, you know, the whole thing for for the small kid was like. He's just becoming into his werewolfness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the the gist of the sh- of the show is that that was the thing of it. But he's a normal looking kid for the most part. But I'm mm-hmm. sure they could change that over a period yeah. of time because well, it's more dramatic than yes. the monsters was. The monsters was a comedy. Well, and don't right. forget this is a pilot, which means this yeah. is all mm-hmm. set up. This is all kind of feeling out the characters. There's no development really happening Not really. here yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't really judge what the show is going to be until you get a, about two or three episodes into the actual series, where the writers have a chance to actually flesh out where they're going to go with it, mm-hmm. what they're going to do. This is just a concept piece. Yeah. So if it was okay as a concept piece then it had a lot of potential it for did. something more yeah. absolutely and it was visually beautiful what mm. network was it on nbc nbc, NBC. Mm. and yeah. you, can, you can catch it on nbc.com okay. still oh, i have to see that so pick yep. it up go over surf on over and watch it because it, it was fun and it definitely had that 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 feel of all the rest of his shows you know the yeah pushing daisy, pushing yeah. daisy. Yeah. like oh, me yeah. wonderful that, that color and uh, everything in the background oh now you made me sad now i miss pushing daisies yeah i want that go back, back and rewatch it dude oh yeah, i'm sorry Thanks for the recommendation of Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Oh, sushi yes. Porn. Because yeah. I realized after watching the video that we stayed in Tokyo not two minutes walk away from his restaurant and we didn't know it was there. Oh. But we did end up going to a three Michelin starred sushi place. It was a six seater also. It was in a car park and yeah. not in a railway station, mm-hmm. but it was sensational. Similar sort of price to Jiro by the sound of it, but OMG, it was sublime. We're probably going back to Tokyo in a couple of months so I'm going to take one for the team and book Jiro <laughs> Sushi oh well yeah. Yeah. good for you my experience at the other sushi place so uh, if you want to see some more photos of sushi porn oh, yeah. just check out the show notes <laughs> or google Shane on the go sushi nice awesome. you know nice. And, and I think that one that he's talking about is actually one of the um, run of the protégés from yes from from, from that thing. so uh, it, it was on no reservations I believe mm-hmm. yeah, of course Tony of Tony. course it's all the really Tony. cool places but yeah I, and some of the places you just you're like Jiro dreams of sushi dude what a great documentary if nobody's seen that I've you heard about it. I've heard it. about I it. Heard it's about on it. my um. It's, it's on, on Netflix. My, it's on my. You've got to see it. Yeah. The, it is an insane amount of work to do. Uh, just do it to, how he does it. Specifically. To do it the way he does it for a twenty-minute session, twenty-minute session of of serving. It takes them like eighteen hours to prep for a twenty-minute serving. Mm-hmm. It's insane it's the amount of detail and attention to uh, to the. He's really crafted it to just a. Uh, Fine, fine, fine art. It's amazing. Hey, Slice, it's the captain. I know you get lots of calls about this, but what? Disney bought Lucasfilm? Ah, uh, yes. New movies? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, this could be either really good or really, really bad. And I know you guys think it'll be really, really bad. 
No, no. We actually, we don't. Later yeah. slicers. We actually no. don't. And we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about it in the next episode. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, but we just touch on it really. I mean, we got the news story in the next episode. So, if you want the absolute fine details, definitely yeah. tune in next uh, next two days, three and days. We kind of do. We kind of wrap about a little bit, but uh, let's do a quick round the room. That that'll be the easiest way, real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Ben. I'm I'm a little cautiously worried because I know that while Disney has been leaving certain franchises alone like Pixar or Marvel, they do also have a tendency to sometimes stick their collective noses where they don't belong and ruin things. Okay. Okay. Sam? I like having George, Lu- George Lucas in an idea advisor capacity and leaving the execution and the nuts and bolts to people who are better at it. Okay. Keith? I'm optim- optimally cautious. <laughs> optimistically you're optimistic. cautious. Optimistic. You're optimistic. You're optimistic. There we go. Yeah, that too. Optimistious. You just made optimist. a new word. Yeah. Yeah. I'm optimistic. I thought I was the dyslexic one in this bunch. <laughs> I'm the yeah. Keith, Keith is optimistic. He is uh, optimistic. <laughs> Mike, what do you think? I uh, have only two things to say, and that's Clone Wars. Yes. Um, that's that's if a good point. Take the property, put it in somebody that has the potential of turning it into something awesome. I'm excited about episode seven. I think it could be phenomenal. Megan? Uh, you know, I wouldn't do Clone Wars. I would go more into the extended universe. I'm more yes. interested in what's happening. Oh, well, absolutely. But they've already said that they're not going to do any of the books. Oh, well, Timothy fine. Zahn would have been awesome if it would I don't think that. so. I don't like Timothy Zahn. Well, I think okay. He, I think he's think he's a horrible writer, but that's just my opinion. Okay. But, I know a lot of people think he's great. But I like the story. I, I don't care about how he read it. I, I, how he read it? How he read it out. Optimistically <laughs> written. <laughs> Optimistically <laughs> written. Wow. Okay, it was written. That one down. Written optimistically. <laughs> You've obviously been in Nebraska. I have been in Nebraska for a way. To, I, I, I spent a week there, and that was too damn long. Yeah. So my take on it is this, is... is all that's good, and I'll talk more about it next week. But my biggest concern is the fans who make these movies, like Troops, mm-hmm. for example. And Lucas has been very open about letting the fans oh. do whatever they want with yes. the franchise. Good Disney, point. Point. Think about Disney that. is going to step all over this because mm-hmm. they do not like anybody exactly. infringing on their property. Well, don't forget. Remember, that's why the, the copyright laws is you know is is all termed around Disney terms. What do they say? It's the, the the mouse rules. I uh-huh. can't remember what it was, but. That is my big concern. So Damon Lindelof has been um, randomly tweeting hilarious things about ideas for the Star Wars <laughs> Disney universe. And one of the things, one of the things he tweeted um, for Halloween, he's like, I'm, he says, for Halloween, I'm going as a Disney lawyer and I'm subpoenaing every kid I see in a in a Star Wars <laughs> costume. That's yeah. awesome. Because you know, it, it is. It may. No, that is a danger. That's yeah. my Aww. that is my They're biggest very, concern. That's a about viable things. concern. So so the rest of it, eh, listen next week and you'll hear more from us. Now I'm kind of bummed. Hi, Slicers, ADD Todd here. Are you aware that your slice of sci-fi Look, in iTunes has been renamed Obsolete Feed? <laughs> yeah, that was <wasn't laughs> that awesome. The old feed has moved yep, yep. to HTTP colon slash slash feeds dot feed blitz dot com yep. slash slice of sci-fi. And that when I search for slice of fi- sci-fi in iTunes, I can't get the current slice of sci-fi? Yeah. You might want to go ahead and start checking with iTunes and see what's actually, going on. Nah, yes, actually, we're, we're working on we, we We got some of that stuff fixed and cleaned up. Yeah. But yeah, it's there. That was a lot of, there's a lot of the things we were talking about at the top of the show. We were doing a little bit of work and the that, hurricane got in the middle of it. That Frankenstorm is just sabotaging us right and left. I don't totally. know what we did to her, but really, well, she just needs Sandy to get over it. Sandy is a bitch. <laughs> But He's, truly, truly, He's a bitch with so, a capital C. I oh. wasn't gonna say. <laughs> oh, but here, guys, if you're still having problems, email Summer at Slice of Sci-Fi. Let her know she can help work you through a lot of these issues. And <laughs> and uh, she doesn't go on Facebook. So you're not gonna find her in there. And I post this on Facebook as well. I <laughs> post some of the fixes. So go out and check it out. But Summer. She contact her. She's really good about working with people. So. Congratulations, Summer. You're going to have 70,000 emails in the next <laughs> 40 hours. You're Yay welcome. Summer. Remember, awesome. I am evil. <laughs> hey, Slicers. It's the Bionic Geek. I just read that Disney is buying all of LucasArts from George yes. Lucas for $4.05 billion. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder yeah. if uh, Disney might not be quite so litigious as Lucas has been in the past. I yeah. Yeah. things uh, might just change. I disagree. I think I, I think, think I'm with be Ben. More. I think they they I don't know. We'll see if they come up with a happy medium, mm-hmm. uh, you know, of of protecting the franchise. But yeah, I'm not 
positive. I don't either. So, mm, you know what? Let's let's take a little break from the Lucas stuff and go to some Sweet Leaf. The Adventures of Sweet Leaf. Your deal, Theresa. Any up, guys. Five card draw and quarter. Dragons are better to open. Hey, how about some decent cards for a change? What are you bitching about? You took half my cash with a lousy pair of unicorns. That's your own fault, Arkle. I could tell he was bluffing by the way he was chewing on that piece of straw. Oh, yeah? Thanks. Trampus, you're a menace. Mike Straw was going to pay for my gas back to Annapolis. I'm in for two dollars. I'll go with that. I'm in. Two dollars. Two bucks and I'll take two cards. Huh? What's the matter, Sweet Leaf? All them cards starting to blur together for you? Give me three. Off the top this time. Oh, Trampus, what fun would that be? Theresa, you're winning way too much to be joking like that. Two cards. I'll take four. Well, now we see who's got the good hand. Crap! How could there be that many bad cards in one deck? They're all good cards if you know how to use them, Arkel. Dealer takes one. Hey, anybody want some from a kitchen? Bring me a beer if you're going. Sure, no prop. Eh, I'll go for another two bucks. I'll stick. Two, and I'll raise another three. He's bluffing. Look at them wings a-quivering. I think you're right, Mike. Five and five more. Whoa, do rich for me. <laughs> Not for ten bucks. I'm out. Here you go, Mike. Thanks. I don't see that. Another 10 says you're bluffing. Oh, yeah? 50 says it's no bluff. Here's your 50, and hell, I'll bet all of it. What's that, about uh, 200 bucks? I'll call you, Sweet Leaf. There it is, a full house. Eight over elves. Seven, eight, nine, ten, orc. Read them and weep, fairy butt. An orc high straight? Oh, man, that's downright shitful. Hi, this is Redshirt from Iowa. They have me training a new guy at work, so I gotta keep this quick. Um, I'm loving what y'all did with the studio, and now that I'm watching the video show, I can finally see what y'all look like. Um, so um, I, I decided to send my first um, video voicemail. Um, Instant Jones, don't put that in your mouth. Um, well, did I did I mention I'm uh, training a new guy at work tomorrow? So I, I gotta run. Very nice. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. <laughs> he wasn't a loved one. If he if he'd asked his loved one to put it, you know, that's it. Yeah. Right. That's a yeah. problem. You yeah. can ask a loved one before. <laughs> Always ask a loved one. That's right. Before putting it in the mouth. Yes. That's right. Yes. <laughs> 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 Keith, don't break Megan. That is our job. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, That's our job. It's Brian's hobby. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Hey, Slicer, Sean from Edwards. You ever have a show or movie that you watch it, something pop, pops up on screen, and you immediately just want to turn it off, walk away, and say, no, thank you, I'm not going to watch this show anymore. Well, I had that with the show that came out this year, Last Resort. And I'll tell you what the moment was. It was the moment when they showed women on board a submarine. Mm -hmm. At that point, I said, this show has absolutely no clue what it's doing. There are no women on board submarines. But I decided, okay, you know what? It's got a good premise. I like the lead actor. I'll give it a chance. Yeah. And, you know, I'm glad I did. Yes. He's they explained really away happy. how they had women on board subs pretty well. Yes. And the mm -hmm. rest of the story has been pretty good that I've liked it so far. People are intelligent. They're realistic for the most part. <laughs> and I, it's interesting to see the world that it's created. Yes. I kind of want to see where it goes after a first season. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
is I'm not sure where it really will go. I know, right? Things either have to re devolve into an all-out war, or it has to show the aftermath of a very quick nuclear exchange. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Should be interesting to watch. Yes. I'm going to hang on and watch it. Well, good. Shock yeah. Metal Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my, Brian and I's new favorites, oh, right? Dude. I love it. I love it's it. And, and keep in mind, I think it's supposed to be set in like a near future, like just a few right. years mm -hmm. down the road, right? So they can fiddle with some of that stuff for dramatic purposes. Right. You know, but I think, uh, you know, uh, this is the point that I brought up that a lot of people in the military or in a military situation like Sean is, um, they're going to have... The, they're they're going to have, have issues with issues it. Issues yeah. with it, yeah, right. Sure. Because some of it's going to go against what they know to be currently the way the world is. Well, it's right. an alternate... Think yeah, of it as alternate. kind of an alternate universe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is kind of a world where yeah, you, you, you have can to, have that. You have to also suspend your... You have to create mm -hmm. that disbelief. I'm sorry. Yeah. You have to make allowances yeah. for the medium, right? Like, so I follow the um, Sean Ryan and Carl... What's his name? I cannot pronounce it. I apologize, Carl. Um, the creators of the writer-producer folks of that show. And they have military advisors mm -hmm. and they try to be as close as they mm -hmm. can for... Mm -hmm. But they, they've said, like, people tweet them, hey, what about this? What about this? And some things they have explanations for and said, hey, our advisors said this. Some things where they're like, yeah, drama, dude. Drama. Well, not only that, you not know? only that. Military life, pretty boring. <laughs> pretty boring Except shit. The cat in the background. Damn. Yeah. I'm almost, I, yeah. The sad part is, is I'm kind of talking myself into liking Battleship a little bit more than I did now. What? So. what? I don't see how I, that correlates uh, whatsoever. Mike, no, you, Mike put that wire in your mouth. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, Slicers, it's Mike from Arlington, Texas. Well, I've been watching yeah. Fringe, and... Oh, oh, my God, oh, my no. God, oh, my oh, God. Oh, no, I know, I know. Okay, we'll stop, stop right there. We'll stop right there. No spoilers. Okay. No spoilers. Holy crap. It was insane. No. I can't believe where they've gone. And we talk about this more in another show. In but. another show, just wait and watch Mike and Sam lose their shit. Yeah. That's basically what it was down to. I really lost control and started hitting the table and didn't realize that it made all the mics kind of make this thundering noise. Yeah. And because so. um, I... It was, it was, it was awesome. pretty amazing. <laughs> it was so pretty you'll, fun. You'll see that. And the awesomeness next. is only beginning. Yeah, I think. Wh wh oh, while, yes. watch, watch in three days. You'll you'll know what we're talking about. Hey, guys. Wrap it out here. Oh, God. I just read where Lucasfilm was bought by <laughs> Disney. Yeah. Oh, oh. You know what this means. What? Yep. Wow. Another version of Star Wars is going to be released. Hopefully, yeah. the original. I have to own it. Part of, ha of Luke and Leah will be played by Minnie and Mickey Mouse. Of course. And Han and Chewie will be played by Goofy Donald and Duck and Goofy. Mm -hmm. And of course, Scrooge like McDuck will be playing the part of Darth, Darth Vader. Vader. Right. Of course. He should be the Emperor. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, they've yeah. actually started. They've actually done that. Uh, I was with posters say. and artwork. They've been they've been uh, uh, substituting Disney characters uh, for Star Wars characters for for, for a long years time. Now. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that's nothing new. The, the headphones on for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So absolutely. Hmm. Hey, slicers. You know, it's April Fool's Day. They're supposed to play jokes on people, not Halloween. Uh -huh. So, haha, -ha, Disney bought Lucasfilm. <laughs> so does that mean next year, in a galaxy far, far away, yeah. I go to Disney World and have my picture taken with Donald Duck, the yes. Hulk, and Chewbacca? Yes, that's right. <laughs> hey, whoa, it's like a nerd conversion. No. That's pretty awesome, it's a nerd actually. Virgins. Nerd virgins. Nerd virgins. We're creating nerd. words all over the place. Nerdgasm, same thing. Nerd. Yeah. yeah, right there. You know, we talked about this a little bit, but I don't know how much I want to get into this. But I mean, the Marvel universe is not suffering from mm -mm. them being nope. with Disney right now. Not yet. Nope. So I mean, not yet. Uh, not yet. Yeah, all it's going to take is one misstep. Yeah. But uh, think about, I mean, okay. again, talking about where the bar is at in the last few Star Wars movies. True. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Expectations well, are sort of low, at least on my end. Yeah. Well, let's go. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's see. Hello, Slicers. I'm sure I'm not the first person to comment on this this week. So here's comment number 1,138 on Disney buying Star Wars, or Lucasfilm, whatever. You know, given Disney's track record recently with the Marvel movies, especially Avengers, and one of my personal favorites lately, The Muppets, which made me generally happy, completely and totally happy when I left the theater for that, I'm really optimistic. I'm actually more optimistic now for Star Wars than I was about three days ago. Those are my two cents. This has been, as always, surreal. 
And echoing kind of yeah. the thoughts yeah. we have here. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I do have to say, Brian makes a great point. Where is the fan base going to go on this? Yeah. Man, I'm I just, mean, mm-hmm. the, the I'm just going to... The carnivores that C&D, are the lawyers... The C&D letters are just going to fly like crazy. Yeah, well, there, there's, there's something else. There's something else to consider. Now, uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but when John Carter was uh, about to be released... That movie suffered not because it was a bad film, but because there was a lot of infighting going on between corporate managements inside the Disney company, and John Carter became sort of like the target over that. Right. It, it was it the collateral the damage. The stepchild. It, yeah. it was. It became the redhead. Exactly. And all that takes is for just that kind of little personality fighting to go on inside the company again, and that that, that can easily happen. And, and and some Star Wars film could just completely tank after it. I tell you yeah. what, the the rabid fan base that is the Star Wars universe. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. this fan base is insane. And True. if you start squashing those, that could be the biggest misstep that Disney ever does. Absolutely. I mean, it, it could absolutely many, kill I mean, them. It would be many could, missteps that Disney has I made. I think yeah. in a lot of ways, though, there's really no winning on this because of the large, huge fan base. You're going mm-hmm. to, whatever they do, they're going to anger a bunch and they're going to make some happy. I, I don't... Yeah, but I mean, if they start going after the actual rabid fan base, they will absolutely right. kill themselves. Right. Lucas yeah. has always been pretty... pretty. Um, he understood well, they the released, fan base. They released yeah. the fan kits, the ability to do all these things, and that was kind of the, the big thing about it. But you're right. What happens? What happens when they go? You know, I'm thinking we're gonna do Star Wars in mime. Yeah, it could happen. You know, it's like you, you give it to you know. We're gonna do it as a French existential film. <laughs> you know, we're gonna do this great. You know, was it already? Ex, you know, experimental oh, French that was director. One, or, you know, I'm sure or whoever. You know, uh, this this you know this grad student who's got this great idea. You know, and, and it bombs, and then you know the fans are gonna be like, yeah, see what we get. So mm. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Hey, Slicer Sean from Edwards. So, my wife decided to finally start watching The Walking Dead. You know, mm-hmm. being Halloween and all. And because of everybody just telling her how fantastic of a show it is. First season, yes. But, and you know what? She hates it. Really? <laughs> and to an extent, I kind of had to agree with her. I know, I know, the slings and arrows are coming. But my wife and I are both of a survivalist mindset and a scientific mindset. Me being an engineer and her being a biologist by training. So we see oh, well, the inconsistencies in the, in the show, yeah, it and does. it's she can't turn off that part of her brain that sees those inconsistencies, and mostly just can't turn off the parts of her brain that are saying these people are all complete and total idiots. Well, yeah. In fact, well. the only characters that she likes so far, and she's just started into season two, are um, the guy with the crossbow and the girl yeah. who goes out and rides the Darryl. horses who helps out her dad yeah. as the yeah. uh, veterinarian assistant. She's like, so far, those are the two most interesting and in characters that. Absolutely. She actually wants to see live. Yes. She thinks everybody else just kind of cries too much and is too useless and just can't welcome, understand why they're so the world. Well, yes. welcome to yeah. reality. useless at the whole survival and zombie hunting thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem I have with But then with I told her, you know what? If yeah. the characters were smart, there wouldn't be that much of a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Out. I will not, say if she can make it through season two, I think season three is a, is yes, a large much improvement. Better. Well, and not only that, it's like, it's like, come on, it's a slice of life. You know uh, how many how many smart people are really truly going to survive a zombie apocalypse? How probably, many, probably not many. How many I mean, people are going to be able survive. to perform well under that kind of pressure and under that kind of stress? Some people freak out. Some people are very calm. Some people take it for a while and then completely lose their crap. You never know until you're in that kind of heinous situation. Right? How do you? Of course, you like to think you're going to make the smart nerd choice, but it's not a role playing game on paper. Yeah, That's yeah. True. Where, where you get to like suss out all your options. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it's. It is Look. if you prepare properly. <laughs> well, there's yeah, that. Where's that 20-sided die? But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just go fast die. through two and get to three. Three is much better. Yeah, yeah. Don't try to compare, uh, you know, a fantasy TV show to real life. Sorry, folks. Just not going to pan out how you expect it. Hello, Slicers. Surreal here. Now, I've been listening to you guys for years. I feel like I know you all really well. And, you know, I've been seeing the videos in it for a while now, so you starting to get a pretty good idea who I am and I've got to ask you very seriously does this hat make me look geeky this has been as always surreal <laughs> well, actually, nice. I'm thinking it's your Firefly Halloween costume I actually <laughs> own two of those yeah. I, I love the Jane hats right? they're great yeah. uh, well actually it's your ass that makes you look geeky <laughs> but that's just me uh, you know. nice Hey, Slicers, it's Arco, uh watching show 507. Awesome. And uh, Car from Hawaii called in. Yes. 
And um, he, he reminded me about that story you covered a couple of weeks ago about, you know, the whole Godzilla remake thing. See, we don't need that. We're getting something better pretty soon. My little brother showed me the poster for this. It's called Pacific Rim. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guillermo del Toro Guillermo. is doing a giant robot versus kaiju movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to repeat that. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. That's a already good. Reference and... and and, and Hellboy, Hellboy bad, badassness, is yes. He's doing a movie about a giant robot, a big stompy robot, fighting a kaiju yep. monster. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait. And yeah. now I need to change my pants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With you 100%, my friend. It's going to be awesome. I, I think it's going to be really, really awesome. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro pretty much doesn't really do crap. I mean, no. Nope. I mean, he's it's always, always interesting. Pretty, even pretty if solid, he, even yeah. if he, you mm -hmm. know, misses the mark a little bit. Because yeah, Pan's Labyrinth was kind of, kind of, eh, I quite story liked wise. It. I but really, it was I really good. Was very, well, very visually beautiful. Exactly. Oh, that's what I'm saying. It really the story was. itself was okay, but the, 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 the best, the parts around it would made it awesome. The Devil's Backbone, I think, is one of my favorites. Oh, it's Spanish yeah. language. It's, yeah. It was really good. Yeah, so, that's good. Uh, and, I, and I had to pee just a little bit just when I found out that Hellboy's going to make another Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like, oh, that was so awesome! I, oh, I pissed myself. I know. <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. Hi, guys. It's Amanda in Tennessee. First off, Mike, you have my condolences on the passing of your father-in-law. Mm, thank you. In March of next year, it'll be three years that I lost my beloved husband. Wow. Now, on to the serious stuff. <laughs> to the gnome okay. that, you know, unfortunately, Sweet Leaf and Clumper Bell have to put up with. Uh, leave Clumper Bell alone. I mean, for crying out loud, she actually sent me a little potion. Oh, yeah. And by the way, Clumperbell, how long am I supposed to hit him with this sledgehammer love potion you sent? <laughs> <laughs> the hammer of love. Hammer That's of what love. that is. Well, <laughs> you know what Captain Hammer says. Yes. Yeah, don't put it in your mouth. I mean, yeah. no, put it, put it in your mouth. Yeah, put it yeah. in your mouth. No, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Put it in your mouth. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. Put it in your mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and on that note, I think we're going to call this good. All Thanks, right. everyone, for good. tuning in. Uh, we, we've, uh, we have a few that we didn't make it this episode, Sorry. But that's okay. You can try again next week. You know the number is 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735. We've got more awesome shows, lots of news, a lot of commentary that's coming up this week, so definitely tune in on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, uh, Tuesday, Monday and Wednesday. So those days. One of know. those days. You know, Tur tune in every day. Days in the week. Yeah, Just every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah, right. yeah. Just, Just it all the time. There's always something on. Never turn away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blink! Don't no, put it in your mouth. That was kind of creepy. <laughs>